Hello, and welcome back to Frozen Frontier. All right. Um, I think I could do with a few days to recover. Perhaps a week. No. We have plenty of food. I'm no coward. I will rest a few days. We don't want to get we'll... back to the fort. We're so close. Uh, let me just get a, a Last little... Last time we well, were so close, we were accosted by kobolds at the end. Unless, uh, well, I, had, I feel a lot healthier than I did that day. True, but still, it'd, it'd do well to make sure that we're all in, in fighting shape before we try to make the rest of the journey. After all we've been through, you're worried about a few kobolds? <clears throat> Even the greatest of men, when gravely injured, could be felled by a simple beast. Excuse me, I'm not injured. Ha! Well, if you want to take points, uh, Grimes, I can lend you my shield. I... I don't need it. I'll deflect their blows with my blade. <laughs> You should switch to using that axe full time. Pick? I know. Yeah. Don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. That was a good shot. Okay. Uh, I would like to spend like at least one extra day, then. just a day's healing will do me. You guys spend a day in the cave. Skinning the bear? So the yeah. rest of today and then all of the next day so you get the healing. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. How much time does it take to tend to Nick's wounds? William's wounds? I don't know. Not that long. What's, it, you, it doesn't take healer, all day. You just have to check on him three times a day, and he's fine. Okay, yeah. so again. Three one healer. Sorry. One healer three. can tend up to six people. That's what I was trying to think. So a sixth of that, at the most, right? So uh, a sixth of a day. Yeah. Do I get two or three HP? You get zero the first day, two the second day. Right. Um, I would like to spend a portion of my day. Hunting for um, like sea creatures in the in the surf or on the on the beach, like I'm thinking like um, mussels or something that I could put in a jar. Sure. Does anyone know what mussels eat? Uh, they're, they're they're filter fil feeders, right? Yeah, like yeah. plankton and little tiny invisible sea creatures. So if I filled a jar with like some some green water and threw some mussels in it. Or like I found a rock with plankton and algae and shit growing on it and threw it in there with some seawater and some mussels. It lasts for a while, sure. Cool. I'm going to search for that. All right. Uh, uh, you start Neil. searching the coastline. Hold on. We're going to deal with the army yeah, yeah. first. Uh, and you do find some mussels. And as you're crawling out onto this rock to like pry off uh, a mussel here, you spot the largest crab you've ever seen. It's like God, this big it. around. It's huge. It's just like chilling down in the water, like picking at some little sea creature, but it's a what? huge crab. Oh, like that big? Yeah, like this big. Okay, I thought you were saying it was like, we had one in Hardcore Heroes that was like yeah, I remember tall that. or something. Or, no, no, I thought you were saying like that for the, the four hit die man crab. Okay. This is so I'm assuming it's crab. the biggest crab I've ever seen. It's definitely not going to fit in my jar. Will not fit in your jar, but it's interesting <laughs> to see this oversized crab. Uh, That's very cool. Yes, um, you... I could keep my eye on it to see um, where it goes. Like, it's just chilling and eating. I'm pulling a Charles Darwin, right? I begin taking mental notes as I, like, study this crab. Sure. Uh, you end up prying a muscle off and getting all the water and everything you need in your jar. Uh, the crab just, like, slowly eats whatever this remains of some creature before it is. Um, and when it's done, it scuttles off. Where does it scuttle? It just scuttles down the coast. I follow it. Sure. Uh, it kind of cruises around for a little bit, hides under a rock for ten minutes, moves back out, you know, tries to eat a fish but can't catch the fish, cruises on, starts eating a random sea and enemy. Um, I just kind of does crabby things and cruises around. It's a big ass crab, but it doesn't seem to be showing any signs of like society or communication or intelligence. I was hoping that maybe I would find like a crab nest or something. Mm. Um, well, you do have the rest of the day. I mean, you gotta check on William every now and then. Yeah. I mean, I basically, I, I make a mental check of like when William needs healing again or when I need like the absolute need to check up on him. I'm gonna spend like the, like, the time I have until that point, following this crab. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna get accosted and killed by moles. <laughs> oh, even by the crab, that would be fun. 
Um, you spend a sizable portion of your day following this crab. You go back and tend to William and then run back out and look for the crab again. And it takes a little while and you find it. Uh, and sure enough, as the day drags on towards evening, the crab does run into some other large crab buddies. Awesome. And they have varying sizes. Some are only about yay big, the size of your face, pretty small. Uh -huh. uh, one of them is maybe like three feet across. Whoa. Yeah. And pretty tall. Like it's That's a, a big crab. Yeah, it's a really big crab. Hot Not damn. Bad. What are they doing when they when he runs into the rest of the crabs? Seemingly they nothing. The they're just they're just being like crabs. They're just like hanging out next to each other. Maybe there's some sort of intricate crab communication that they're doing with their feelers, but you can't Is see there it like from up a above. Burrow? Mm, not clearly. You're having a hard time, like, because you're staying on the rocks, not trying not to like disturb the crabs in the water. Uh -huh. So you're having like really bad views of these creatures. You're like trying to scout out, but it's 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 difficult when they can when they move like 15 feet away from you, and you're having like an awkward angle through water that has waves, you know. Uh huh. Um, but there are multiple of these crabs, and they have a very large variety of size. Ooh, very cool. Uh, I take mental note of this, like, exact location on the beach, right? Like, I spend some time memorizing landmarks and things so I can find my way back here. Okay. Um, and I guess I, get, I check to see if there's any crabs with unusual colorings or unusual, like, um appendages maybe they have something that's different than crabs you normally see on the coast no they seem pretty regular crab just odd size uh they all have red shells and red red pinchers mm -hmm. um, which is really how you spot them like they they kind of stand out that's very cool mm -hmm. all right uh okay. i just I make note of this place and then i guess i i will return all right oh marshall <laughs> you had something you wanted to say yeah, I was going to ask, is my, is my armor actually damaged? Yeah, it's repairable by yourself if you spend some time to fix it, but until you do, it's going to be at, like, minus two to AC. That bear ripped you to shreds. Is, can I rest and repair it in this day? Uh, yeah, it'll take a little bit more than a single day to repair it. You're going to have to, like, get out your pliers and your... In fact, you might not even have uh, chainmail repairing tools with you on the go. You're going to need Probably at least not. two sets of pliers to do this. Okay, so it's probably damaged until I get back. Yeah. All right. So I will spend the day scouting in the woods while Yaramir is scouting the coastline. Mm -hmm. I don't go more than like a mile and a half or something from the from the cave, but I sure. scout these woods uh, looking for vegetables, perhaps. You don't find any vegetables. No vegetables. No. Any any signs of cold knolls? Anything interesting? No signs of kobolds or gnolls. <laughs> it is a light day today, so the the winds pick up every now and then, making it... Kobold tracks are pretty light. They, they mm -hmm. get covered very quickly. Knoll tracks might still be around, but you don't see any. Um, okay. The woods are barren and empty. I chew on some pine needles and head back to the cave. Tastes like sap. All right, um, I wake up early the next morning then, and I start getting everyone ready to leave. I'm still visibly wounded, but I'm yeah. putting on a brave uh, front. Are you sure you don't want to rest longer, William? I'll be fine, it's just, uh, I'm just getting old, that's all. Well, I would like <laughs> to make a quick detour before we leave. There's interesting uh, crab creatures on coast. Uh, I would like to see if I can find their home. Oh, uh, Neil, during the, like, day that we rested, I wanted to, like, re... I, I had 20 days of rations that I wanted to bring from the Yeti, so I want to restock up to 20 days from the, the bear. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Yaramir, how long will that take? It is only, like, 10-minute walk on coast. All right. Sure. You guys take a 10-minute detour, uh, cool. and you go back to that same spot where you saw the crabs uh -huh. yesterday. Um, what the fuck are these? Today, there doesn't appear to be any crabs in this spot right now, when you first okay. arrive. Um, I want to investigate the area and look for a burrow or a, like, rock that they live under. I want to find where these crabs come from. The ocean. Uh, 
how long would you like to spend in crab investigation? Until Kel Marshall gets upset and like <laughs> <yanks him away. laughs> All right, Marshall, how long will you so, allow for so this what are you, task? What are you visibly doing? Just like upturning rocks? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm like combing the sand and turning over rocks and like staring longingly at the ocean, like trying to figure out how to get underneath it. So he said it was a 10 minute detour, so I'll give him half an hour and then All right. we're gonna go. So the rocks that you can flip over are the ones that are on the beach and the ones that aren't too small. <laughs> um, none of them have crabs under them. The big crabs would clearly hide under rocks that are too massive for you to move. Um, let's make a check. <laughs> Half, half an hour of checking, no. You you dig around for a little while, but you don't see any crabs again. Okay. There were a bunch here yesterday, though. Is this is this important, Yaramir? I found crabs of unusual size uh, last night. Uh, I did not believe they existed, but then I found them. Ah. I wanted to find their lair. Perhaps there's something unusual causing the size change. Captain, have you ever eaten crab? I have. Tasty, Chris's. It's delicious. But right well, now, I mean, I'm I'm sick of meat. I'd kill for an orange. I mean, I suppose we could spend another day, Yaramir, if you really think that there could be something in this. But if it's just a, a fleet of fancy, then I suggest we carry on. Well, I would like to come back, for crabs of unusual size are rare. Well, well we have to come back for the pelts anyways, right? Well, I'll probably be on a boat. You guys head out. Yeah. Uh, it takes three days to arrive back at camp. <laughs> but you do so without any further encounters. Ah, no that's sign been a of long time. No it's, sign of the knolls or anything. No sign of the knolls, but as you approach the camp, there are signs of kobolds. Um, namely, there are kobold bodies mounted on the walls of the fort on the mm -hmm. ends of spears uh just kind of like hanging off the edge of the the fort maybe maybe a dozen kobold bodies mm. looks so like those little idiots break the treaty that we made yeah i guess that didn't work hmm. hopefully we haven't lost many more men um how long has it been Neil? roughly since you were last in camp yeah is it like a month yeah. That, oh, it's been that. like two weeks since you left the cave, basically. Yeah. Since the Yeti cave. So it's been definitely... So about two months. It's been a month, maybe? A month and a half? I don't know. I think it's been long. Like we, been... we were in blizzards for a lot of that travel time. Yeah, yeah we were. close to two months. It might be about two months. Maybe it's a month yeah, and a half. Wicked beard going on right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys... Ferris has like the rawest peach fuzz you've ever seen. No. I, so we I, rolled I, for it. You can't even grow. I don't even think you grow. Yeah, you have like three wispy hairs. <laughs> right, right. Your hair growing you, ability is. You a three. look like you look like a beautiful chiseled elf. <laughs> um, so it's been a while since we've checked in with any of you guys personally. So we're gonna do that right now as you come back to this uh, back to Fort Wick. You've been gone a month and a half ish, something like that. Uh, let's start with Yaramir. How are you feeling? after all the things that have happened in this last journey out of the fort. Tired. Yarmir needs, like, a break. He's been... He's not the strongest, most physically able person, and he's basically been surviving on very little for two months. He, in order to survive a blizzard, had to sacrifice, like, almost near hypothermia. Um, and just, I think he's just physically exhausted and it just kind of catches up to him as he sees the fort, but he knows like he has a lot of mental exercises he still needs to do. So just like, just, he feels like he needs the longest nap. Right. Uh, Grimes, what about you coming back in? Does this bring up any emotions for you? Well, as I said, I'd kill for an orange right about now, but... Other than that, I think Grimes has rather enjoyed this uh, this ranging. After a couple months rotting in a prison cell, this is uh, this freedom is quite refreshing. Right. And the well, colds eh, gets you get used to it. How did you but, uh, feel about having to ferry your party back and forth across that cavern? Uh, I 
I made a big fuss uh, about it and complained a lot to the party. Don't tell them, but I, I rather enjoyed feeling needed for once. What about you, Ferris? You finally found pretty something elven-ish? Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that that's a thing. It's not necessarily what he was hoping for. I feel like an elven skull isn't, he, he was looking more for relics of elven history and less mm -hmm. <laughs> remnants of old body parts, especially with his whole theory that like, the body is meaningless and like elves will eat anything. They don't give a shit, right? right. Like the, one, once once somebody has died, their, their body is worthless. You can do whatever with it. Where has that skull been? Uh, I think is I was it, just carrying it. I think is for it like the in most your part, backpack, or are you? Is it like? Uh, I think Ferris actually like straps it to his side, so it's like always emitting light around him. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind Grimes of like a has been like side. strategically positioning himself <laughs> up with like several party members between him and the skull. Yeah. Uh, Fer Ferris is carrying around, but his whole his whole idea is he wants to give light because he knows other people in the party can't see, so he's like keeping it out where it's actually going to be useful for people. And like when we're in the tent at night, he'll like have it out. So there's like nice little it lantern light all around the place. Light. It's red, yeah. but it's nice. Uh, what about you, William? I don't know. I, I feel like a little bit disappointed that we haven't found any more man-made structures yet. But we did find the lighthouse, and um, we have got some more gold, or you know, wealth to bring back. But we've been gone a long time. I, I think it's just slowly like. I mean, he suspected this, but the reality now is that. Uh, you know, we've, we've just been gone for two months and come back with like a handful of gold. The, the chance of, you know, seeing uh, the end of the year back at home is unlikely. I'm starting to feel like this is a longer term expedition than maybe he hopes it might be. All right. Well, you guys do make it to the fort. The gates are opened for you, and there's kind of a, a silent stare as you guys walk in, dragging this huge sled behind you filled with all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, Captain Hughes comes out and stands in the courtyard as you approach with her arms crossed, watching doing you. A, doing a quick scan. What's the head count looking like? Short. But, you know, someone's probably just out on patrol, or two groups are out on patrol. You count four soldiers on the wall and Captain Hughes, and that's it. People are probably on patrol. Captain? She nods. We thought you died. I, I thought you might have. We've um, ranged very far south. Well, come in, get some warmth, get some food. We have much to talk about, I'm sure. Can you um, arrange for somebody to bring this stuff to the storeroom? Are you incapable of bringing it yourself? Have you been able to haul it for two months? And now at the very last bit, you your strength has given out. I'll take it the rest of the way. William, <clears throat> go see that your wounds are treated. Thanks, Faris. I give uh, a bit of a disapproving look to Captain Hughes as I walk off. Yeah. She's just got a cold, icy stare. You guys are welcomed back into the fort, uh, and there's some kind of whisperings between the other part, the uh, the other fort members as they watch you from a distance. Um, you're realizing that, you know, you've been on this continent for a few months now, but you've only spent maybe a couple of weeks with these people and that, all that time. Yeah. And you don't really know too much about them. And your life and their life, while both dominated by the weather, are probably very, very different. Very so, different. Um, I help Ferris pull the car, or pull the sled, or whatever sure. in. And then I find the cook. David! Actually, I was you... going to go see the cook, too, so I think okay. I'm going with Grimes. <laughs> you, you've been saving my rum rations for me, haven't you? Uh, David sort of half nods like, yes! Uh, apparently, though, the rations for you are only available for the days that you're here, and you don't get rations on days you're not here. I, Sorry. I, I tried to set him aside, but Captain Hughes wasn't too happy about that. Rubbish. She well, said we shouldn't be wasting rum on people who are probably dead. Captain uh, Hughes has far too little faith in us. Uh, talking about Captain Hughes, I'll go and wait in our office. Or her, sure. like, tent uh, or whatever. Yeah, and basically what Ferris wants to do, he takes out that three-pound block of salt that he's carrying now, and he's mm -hmm. going to cut off, like, a pound of it uh, for the cook to keep. Sure. Uh, and he, um, he seems very surprised when you like bring this like 
chunk of salt out, uh, but yeah. very happily wraps up his block in a, a cloth, yeah. brings it over to a little box, and yeah. you know sets it in there, tucks the cloth around the edges, and then breaks the the block into the powdered salt with the. Yeah, and then um, I don't really have anything like significant, or I don't have anything specific to roleplay, but I think Ferris's goal is to talk like uh, recipes with them. He has some, like he's had some ideas over the past two months with his cooking proficiency, and he wants to talk uh, recipes. The, sh the chef guy must hate when you turn up. I, as, as Grimes leaves, <laughs> I whisper in David's ear, I'm like, if you're looking for a potent laxative, Ferris is Yeti jerky, he'll hit the spot. <laughs> 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 and I slip back out into the, into the board. Okay. Um, so, I think the, you, you get hot food brought to you. It's like a nice stew. It's got potatoes and carrots and onions and leeks and all sorts of like wonderful vegetables that you haven't had in ages. Um, mm -hmm. Along with a little bit of meat and a little bit of broth and some gravy and some bread with a little bit of um, rosemary stuffed in it. It's delicious. Uh, and so you guys get to sit down for a meal while Captain Hughes comes over and debriefs you on what has happened in your absence. Um, are we all together now? Yeah, you guys are all like okay. munching together. Okay. Um, she's got a bit of bread and some olive oil that she's dipping it in while she talks. And she says, whatever treaty you thought you brokered with those kobolds didn't work. Saw them on the walls. What happened? Well, rather than running into them in bands of maybe a dozen, they started appearing in larger groups, scores of them. Good, Sergeant Joseph and his group, patrol, yeah. she interrupts, like, talking right over Yaramir. Sergeant well, Joseph and his whole patrol, patrol went out. Woman. And Please. they were Yaramir. looking for food, and they never came back. We found the site of the battle, <clears throat> but there were no corpses of either humans or kobolds. <sighs> Looks like a more permanent solution must, might be needed then. Do you have any idea where they are? She shakes her head. We found some of their hidey holes. We've done what we can to root them out. We've <laughs> slaughtered maybe 60 or so. But they appear to be endless in numbers. When we that do encounter them, they tend to be in groups of 20 plus. And the battle site where Sergeant Joseph was... Our trackers counted maybe 40 or 50 at the time. Have I think you requested... we've just driven them to working together against us rather than splintering them apart. Have you requested new men to man the fort? I don't think that's your problem. I don't think that falls in your jurisdiction. That's why he asked if you did it. Come on. Has the ship been by since we've while we were gone. Captain Hughes is clearly uh, upset the loss of our men. It's understandable. Yes, your supplies have arrived. And there is a letter for you, William, from your wife. And ah. for you, Grimes, from... It's unsigned on the outside. She hands both of you letters. I Didn't know you it. were married, Grimes. <clears throat> Didn't... Um, William, your I letter comes secrets. attached... Uh, tied to a, a set of mittens as well. Ah, oh, not nice. All right, I mean, I don't read, I don't read it here. I'll read I will it. paste it to you so you can read it as you please. Nice. Grimes surreptitiously looks at his in the corner and realizes he can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have any pictures or anything, Neil? No. It's just like um, a dirty picture. It's like, three sen it's like four sentences long as well. Your, your um, literacy is sure. known to us, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ferris gives well, you, like, actually, no. Uh, to Ferris, yes. There was a remember that requisition form that Grimes oh, right, right, had right. Ferris help, help him out. with. I think Ferris. I don't think oh, he's shit, admitted yeah. to no, William. I, okay, I was I was gonna mock you, but I think if we've actually if we've partnered up for the requisition forms before, I think <laughs> Ferris just offers to read the letter for you. Like a, a I little might bit actually more. Just, like, go, I think I'd probably go to Yaramir. Okay. Oh. Because he. Okay. Should I? I'll post the message to Yaramir, and then he can read whatever he wants to you. Do you, 
do you come to me like in the middle of dinner or like is this kind of off to the side on our off own? to the side yeah 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 okay so you you find me um in in some kind of like side moment and we we huddle in a corner and i say yes uh, i can read this for you uh it says how long has it been my kid you should write more don't forget family family is most important thing comes before all else and that is all it says. Is it from? I do not see signature. Do I see a signature? Nope. There is no signature. Hmm. There's no return address. <laughs> you should write more anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds sinister to me, though. Crimes. Right. I take That's it back. <laughs> Uh, are these mittens usable, Neil, or are they... Totally. Yeah, your wife knitted them for you. Yeah, but can I, can I wield a sword whilst wearing them? Oh, God, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had one warmth, though. Maybe two. I will smell Actually, them. Actually, yeah. At some you point... You smell we'll... the mittens? Well, she made them right. It, yeah. it does smell like your wife, yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Mixed with a little bit of fish from the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at some point, Nick, I do want to talk to you about what you're wearing for warmth, because I'm thinking about switching to um, male armor. Okay, But yeah. I, I'd have to start wearing other uh, things for warmth at that point. So hide is where I'm getting mine right now. But if I well, good for you. We have three sets of chain mail that have come yeah, on that's, the boat. I know. That's why I'm thinking about switching over to Oh, it. yeah. By the way, all of this stuff should be in the Quartermaster's like, supply. Like, the deal I struck with Alicia is it was all hers until we needed it. So, like, how much of this has been requisitioned in the two months we were gone? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Have the... Okay, has the fort requisitioned any of these items while we were gone? Should I strike them off of our list? Which items? Like, I don't... All of them. I'm, the things that you wanted to buy that you all, wanted yeah, to buy? Yeah, all the things, the things we that we bought. The fort, what's yeah, gone? They, they, they all came. Them. They all arrived. And he since means you guys like ordered our, it, it's all our, Did other people start requisitioning them and using them? No. Okay. Yeah, they've been set aside. All your stuff is still here. So I'll, I'll um, at some point, you know, we're going to need to catalog the the things that we've brought back, and I need to speak to Captain Hughes in private. Okay. Um, I think everyone starts to spread out and do their own things. <laughs> Go back to your like com comfortable beds. Um, they're just like cots, but. You know, it's not the hard floor, and it's not right, snowy. Yeah. And there's like a fireplace in the next room, and so all the warm air like floats down into you. In fact, do you guys have your own fireplace? You might have your own fireplace. So it's it's One cozy time. and warm, and there's an unlimited supply of firewood and hot food. It's great. And just like, oh my God, relaxing. Uh, but you find Captain Hughes at some point. Uh, she's got a cup of rum in her hands. As she sees you come over, she pulls a bottle out from behind a, a little bookshelf and pours you a glass of rum as well. Thank Sets you. Down in front of you. Take a, 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 you know, chink a glass and take a sip. Mm. Well, uh, I'm really sorry that uh, the deal we made with the kobolds didn't hold water. I'll do what I can to rectify it. Yeah, there's only so much four men can do against an army of kobolds. Got to understand our, our primary objective here is to seek out um, remnants of the, the previous men that lived here. She nods. She understands. <laughs> she gets it. In that vein, uh, we have made some advancements. I should hope so. Do, do we have some sort of a map? Nope. That's all. Okay, so I... I, I'm no cartographer, but I'll try and uh, this is that paper or parchment. Yeah, if you requisition some. So I'm going to try and draw them up. So use the back of the requisition. <laughs> I found the loophole in the system. Use the back of the requisition form. <laughs> Fuck this bureaucracy. <laughs> so can I have a blank? Can I have a blank piece of paper to try and draw them up? Sure. Uh, let's bring you to a completely blank map. All right, here we go. You ready for this? This is William's map. So if this is the fort, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So it kind of goes like, like this, right? And then the, the mountains are like here. And then like something else down there. I don't know what's down there. So I say that this is where we found the um, the tomb. And uh, we journeyed down to here. And uh, the mountains met the edge of the, the land and there was, there was no passing it. But um, we climbed up the mountains slightly and it was a, a clear day. And beyond the mountains, there was a, a patch of outstretched land, and I we saw a lighthouse here. Functioning? Was it lit? It was not lit, but it was clearly um, man-made, or at least elven-made, or intelligently made. Um, but there's no access to it from where we were. But if there's a lighthouse, there's there's bound to be civilization nearby. It's it's just a matter of getting there. Do you think the princess would um, send a ship to ferry us across? I think when the resupply ship comes in a couple of weeks, I'm sure you could offer them a sum of money to take you there and maybe send another ship to pick you up at some point in time. So I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, hopefully deal with these kobolds in the meantime. But I, I have something else to tell you about that's slightly more troubling. Hmm. Uh, we were we were tracking through the snow, and we stumbled across a uh, frozen corpse. Clearly from uh, before the the, no. the land was frozen. No, a hmm. human. Um, we wanted to study it more, so we we thawed it by our fire, and. <laughs> The moment the ice melted away, uh, the body began to disintegrate into into pus and just yellow slime. We th we threw it away, and uh, I, at first I thought maybe it was a disease frozen by the ice or something like that. But um, we've noticed a similar thing with the trees. When if you notice when you cut them down, the wood withers instantly, as if it. She nods and kind of makes a motion to be quiet. No. Many of these other people haven't picked up on that yet. I didn't want to <laughs> say anything. The wood here is too dry to be growing and living. Yeah, well, look, I'm um, I'm a, a faithful man. I have faith in the gods. But until now, I wasn't sure whether this was just some freak of nature that froze this place over. But it seems to me now that the gods are definitely involved. And it seems remiss that there's no cleric here. I mean, Princess Sella has clerics in her employ. There are clerics who work with her, but it would be wrong to think of it as employed. Perhaps, but the church should know about this, and they, there should be a representative here, at least, even if it's just to consult for a day while the ship docks. The church has warned us not to come, and has been leveraging their influence to reprimand Sela politically mm. for this expedition. So they you are... think the chance of getting a cleric here is nothing? She nods. I don't think any are coming. They consider this area cursed and a defilement of the gods to be here at all. <clears throat> well, they might be right about the curse, but... I guess we should carry on, then. Uh, the lighthouse hopefully proves um, more fruitful, but... Uh... We've, we found more wealth. We, I found a large iron chain. Uh, some furs of great great beasts we found down south. Uh, bipedal bears with horns. Uh, very strange. Hmm. And, uh, yo, and, and I pull out the, um, the, the old plaque. You remember those coins? This has the same tech or the same symbols on, on, on it. It's quite clearly a passage of some sort. She kind of perks up at this and this whole conversation, she's kind of not been making eye contact. She's been looking around, maybe looking into the fire. Um, this is the first time that she actually seems interested and comes okay. over to take a look at the plaque that you've got. She turns it over, looks at it, looks at the writing on the front and shakes her head. I, can any of you, your people read this? No, no one can read it, but there has to be someone in the kingdom who has some knowledge of this language. Don't well, you send it dare back for study. Maybe just send that word for uh, 
anyone who has knowledge, maybe they could come to the fort and stay here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no one's coming to the fort to read this plaque for you, Captain. I don't know what sort of outfit you've dealt with back home, but out here we're alone. There's no rescue boat coming. Of course, we but succeed or fail on our own. The crown has interests in our success. Financial interests. This could prove useful. Then you should write to Princess Sella herself and ask for uh, another person to come down here, a great scholar with great knowledge um, that the kingdom can afford to send off down to an area where they might freeze to death or die. I will. Uh, I'll. I will take a an etching of it and send the plaque to the princess. You are wise to suggest so. That seems like a better solution. <clears throat> so these kobolds. Do you have any any way that you think uh, we could deal significant damage to them, other than just Leave set the out kobolds to, to us? You have your job here, going and exploring and finding wealth. I have mine. There are more men coming. I assume. Maybe. How many oh. do we have? We lost nine. You'll have to excuse my memory. That leaves us with... Leaves us with nine. Plus myself. The cook. His daughter who keeps hiding every time a boat comes. Um, and the quartermaster. The number has been halved. <clears throat> it explains why the, the stew was so uh, plentiful. Mm. Well, with these numbers, we can't really hunt for supplies anymore, but we have enough to last us quite a while. We can always keep requisitioning new ones as long as you keep finding money, and we'll see about reinforcements. But to be honest, I don't think more material or men will really be sent until something substantial has been found down here. Yeah. I need to get to that lighthouse. Yeah. How far have you sent men out? Since far? Sergeant Joseph and his men disappeared, we've been keeping pretty close. Okay. I haven't been to the, um, and I draw on the map, like, down here. We haven't been in this direction yet. No one's been that way, I suppose. But the lighthouse seems like a good sign. Far be it from me to tell you how to run your ship. Seems like yeah. the most promising sign of wealth. Definitely. All right. How when when is the ship due? Do you know? Mm, they roughly every thirty days. Last one was here on the 29th? 27th? Twenty ninth. Today we is. Be here. <laughs> Today is the thirteenth. Ah, okay. Two weeks or so. I need to heal anyway. Yes. Are you sure you don't need our help with the kobolds? If you want to run around chopping kobolds to bits, that's fine. But I wouldn't want to see the four of you vanish, and then all purpose of this expedition is lost. What I would say is, if you can. Uh, I'm not sure what resources you have available to achieve this, but the next time we return to camp, if you have a plan in place that we could help with, and I'm happy to, to action it. But uh, like you said, I, I think just wandering around in the snow looking for them, um, well, it's not really gonna, it's not gonna solve the problem. And maybe if you can find that lair, then the next time we're here, we can go and try and kill them all. She kind of just looks at you flatly, you know. What? She shakes her head. We'll do what we can. You should probably see to your men. Make sure that they're comfort comfortable back here. Uh, trust me, they're comfortable here compared to what we've been through. Hmm. Well, you may want to make sure your man doesn't cause any problems. Which one? She kind of makes a gesture to the ears. Faris. Uh, it's the it's the wizard that you want to worry about, really. 
but uh, <laughs> I'll go and check up on them. Uh, not what the thanks. scuttlebutt has been around for. I want seem to concerned say. about Ferris. In what way? He's a good man. He does his duty. They've been concerned about a non-human here with us, wondering where his loyalties actually lie. To be honest, initially I dismissed it, but then they told me some stories that had been passed around about elves and about things that he's said or done. Like what? My concerns. She shakes her head. It's probably nothing, but... You should see that he makes a better impression. I'll see what I can do. He's a stubborn creature. <laughs> thanks for your time, Hughes, and thanks for the rum. Try to keep your chin up, I say as I walk out. Okay. She'll leave, uh, she lets you leave without a word. Um, so, Ferris... Not Ferris, um... No, actually, yeah. Actually, this is fine. What do you guys want to do now? You have... Ferris wants to help with cooking. Like, yeah, I took I mean... that cooking proficiency. I want to, like... I haven't really done much in the fort while I'm here, usually. Mm -hmm. I think Ferris has kind of, like, developed an interest in cooking. And now that he's got, like, a kitchen with materials, he kind of wants to help the chef with, like, trying to prepare good meals. Like, actually taking what we have and trying to, like, experiment and make delicious things with them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially now that we have, like, actual ingredients. I'm not just working with, like, Yeti meat and some salt every day. <laughs> uh -huh. I think Ferris wants to practice his cooking as, like, his downtime thing here in the fort. And, uh, the, just sometime before, I don't know if we're going to leave the fort before the end of this session, but, um, I might be switching to mail armor. And if that's the case, I need to work out with Nick, because I'll have to get some new, like, warmth clothes since I want to Did you hide. requisition mail armor? I have not yes, yet. Yes, we so did. We, if we have, like, three it. sets of mail armor in, in storage. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have three sets of chain mail, two sets of hide, two shields, two heavy cloaks. Oh, God, one... this list goes on forever. Let's not recite the whole thing. <laughs> it's like five pages of items, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, for those of you in chat, it was impressive. We had, like some hundreds of thousands of copper to work with and i think we finished with under 100 because 147,705 <laughs> pieces of copper and i finished with exactly 10 and then you guys had to go change some shit and then we finished with 85. yeah basically greg's good at math sure uh so we have i'm just gonna tell you the the boat is gonna arrive on the 24th so you have like 12 days to spend here I think that's mostly going to be William. Yeah, but that's about what I need to heal, so. <laughs> okay. Um, can we... I leave them to heal with the medic. Sergeant Elizabeth can take care of them. Yeah. Um, okay, so if we're just if we're just waiting, Nick, what do you... Or are we going to do another break? Because we can do it during the break. Because it's all just me asking what he's wearing to figure out where I'd be getting warm from without hiding. Sure, you can do that during the break. But there are a few okay. things that I would like to do um, before the break. Or at least start before the break. Uh, we have... Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ele I'm sorry. Eleven days here at the fort. Mm -hmm. um, so Yarmir, that is potentially up to right, eleven so spells you can learn. It's my turn. I would Yay. like to go find Amelie. You do find Amelie. She is around. Um, I I kind of uh, am a little hesitant to to talk with her at first because the last time we talked, there was some potential child suicide going on. Uh, so <laughs> that was a little disturbing. Um, so I, I think I spend some time, like, I, I find her and see what she's doing. I probably just take, like, a moment to kind of look at her and make sure she's healthy. Like, does she look malnourished? Do I see signs of self-harm? Like, that type of thing. <laughs> uh, give me a psychologist check. <laughs> um, How about healing? Sure, sure. Healing is fine. All right. Um... Oh my god. Oh, I need my character sheet. Greg, you're gonna um, inadvertently destroy this young child. <laughs> I was just trying to be helpful. Uh, that 25 doesn't work for some reason? Oh, I guess I already had my... I didn't really... Okay, yeah, 25 works. Cool. I didn't yeah, realize so, I clicked on a character. Uh, so you you kind of take a look at her. She seems fine. She seems happy and healthy. She's got a big smile on her face. She uh, is currently playing with a couple of snowmen that she's built outside a little bit. Um, one of them has a stick 
that kind of looks like a sword and then has like a, a plank of wood that was used for something inside that has been ripped out clearly and like leaned against it almost like a shield. Um, and the other one she's currently like drawing sharp teeth on with her with a little stick. Nice. Awesome. Um, so so I go up and I, and I, I like praise the, the, the craftsmanship of these snow people. Like, mm -hmm. these look like some amazing snow people fighting off the kobolds, are they? She nods emphatically. Mm-hmm. Oh, Killing I can the evil tell. kobolds. You will be an artist one day for sure. I don't want to be an artist. I want to be a warrior. Mm. I want to kill the kobolds like Captain Hughes. Have you ever heard of Poet Warrior? No. Who's that? <laughs> Uh, I, I, there is tremendous bard by name of Garrett. Garrett the bard went to school of valor, learned to wield both the poetry of ancestors and the sharp sword. He was able to bring entire nations down to his, to their knees via just a word and a song, but was also able to delve deep underground and bring back treasures of immense power with the point of his sword. I think perhaps this may be something you could look into. Mm, maybe? It seems I weird think... to be able to talk to people than beat them. A silver tongue is sometimes more powerful than a magic sword. Mm. Anyway, I have brought a back present for you as promised. Oh, she perks uh -huh. up a little. Um, I produce from, from my robe um, four jars. Uh, three jars, because I'm not giving her the pickled yeti eye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a jar filled with furry ants about the size of a knuckle with like scraped off bark and, and leaves and twigs in there. Um, and I explain where I found them. Like I found this one in forest, large furry creatures that crawl along the, the trees. They should keep for a while. They can be your pets. Here I find, I, I, I produce the like stones covered with turquoise lichen. And I think I've probably cast like um, um, continual light underneath the rocks and like set them in there in such a way so that a little bit of glow comes out. Uh -huh. uh, so they look really fancy. Um, and and I, I explain where I found these inside a deep dark cave and there was this cool turquoise moss. And then I give her uh, one with like the muscles covered in, uh, the, the muscles that are like scrubbed up on these rocks with some algae and some seawater. And I describe the cave and the, the coastline and like just make, I, I, I essentially t spend some time telling about our adventures in the most like romanticized light possible. Oh. She listens wide-eyed, um, and partway through, David, her father, brings out a cup of hot cocoa to both of you. Mm -hmm. um, she plays with the ants a little bit, taking them out, holding them. One of them bites her, and she tosses it on the ground and, like, stomps on it until it's dead, and closes the jar back up and shakes it around to punish all the other ants. Um, oh, you know, she this girl, them. honestly, she sounds like a natural ruler. This, this is all <laughs> Uh, yeah, it all goes fairly well with her. She seems pleased to have you back and enjoys your stories and loves the pets that you brought back for her. She was particularly interested in the ants more than the mussels, but now she sort of hates them, but like keeps them anyway. Yeah. But like wishes them ill. Well, I, I, I wish that, that uh, <laughs> I had more like cool creepy crawlies to give her and less like random crap I had to just fill these with. <laughs> all right. Uh, why don't we take a break, and when we come back from break, we can have Yaromir roll to learn some spells. We can see what Grimes is up to, because I have a feeling Ryan has something he wants to do with Grimes. He's got that look about him. Uh, and right. then we'll see if you guys can set out for the lighthouse. Yeah. So we'll right. see you on the other side of the break. Bye-bye.